hymnals down, but pick your Bibles up. I want you to go with me to the New Testament, to the book of Jude, the New Testament book of Jude. And we'll begin reading in verse number one. Jude, verse number one. Now, if you go too far, you'll be at the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ. So don't go too far, because we're not getting into that tonight. Although Jude precedes that book, which rightfully so, because the apostasy that's talked about here is going to precede everything in the book of Revelation that's taking place. Uh, that we're going to, we would find there if we look in the book of Revelation. Jude, verse 1. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Talking about apostasy here in the book of Jude. Let's pray. Father, I pray you would help us tonight as we look into your word. We are not looking for it, and I'm, I thank you that we're not looking for your word. Thankful that we can look in it, that we can be assured of it because the author is living inside of us, the Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit. And thank you for giving us the assurance of our salvation, giving us the assurance of your word, that we can trust every bit of it, that we can trust you because you are faithful. Thank you tonight, Lord, uh, for all that you have done for us, the desires you give us, the health you give us, the strength you give us to be here. May you illumine our minds and our hearts. May you stir us. May you convict us. May you change us tonight as we exercise faith in your word and what you speak to us about tonight. Father, if there's one here that's not saved, Lord, may tonight be the night that they realize that they have no chance to get to heaven without your son, Jesus Christ, and his righteousness and his shed blood and having their sins forgiven. Lord, would they come to you. Father, guide us and direct us as your children. We'll thank you for it. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I want to remind you that an apostate or apostates uh, profess to have faith in Christ, but they deny the faith. So that's what's so difficult with apostates. That's what's so difficult with apostate churches and apostates is because they talk about faith. They talk about having faith in Jesus. They talk about Bible things. They use Bible terms but they deny the faith. Now, faith, if we're going to try to define it here for our purposes, faith is an act of 100% trust whereby we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior. We trust Him. We trust what the Bible says about what He's done for our sins and what He's done for us. And the faith is the body of truth we must accept in order to receive Jesus Christ as our Savior. That the makes a difference. We have faith in the faith, we find doctrine, we find what the Bible says about the Lord Jesus Christ, and we believe that. And so they would say they have faith in Christ, but they deny the faith that they need to believe in order to trust Jesus Christ as their Savior. And so very tricky, very tricky, apostates. And the devil's the same way. He's a counterfeiter, real close to the truth, real close to the truth. He could never duplicate the Holy Spirit. And, and the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives and God's work in our lives. And so if we know the real thing, then we know the counterfeit. All right, we're dealing with apostates here. And we've already looked at in the first two verses here that we're preserved from apostasy. We see here in verse 1, it says, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. We're preserved from apostasy. Jude was preserved from apostasy. He talked about how he had a relationship with Jesus, not just physically, but he had a spiritual relationship. He was his servant. 
and he was a child of God. And then he goes on to talk to believers or children of God and how they're preserved from apostasy and how we are, um, how the Lord sanctifies us and how the Lord preserves us and he calls us. And then he also sustains us in our life with this multiplied mercy and peace and love in our life that we're going to need as we face apostates who don't have these things because they're not a child of God. Then we come to verse 3 and 4, and we might be here a while in verse 3 and 4. There's some things that need to be unloaded here, unpacked. We need to dig up some things, and then we need to find out what it's saying and, and uh, talk about some of it. And so we're going to jump into it tonight, a different section according to how I have broke up the chapter. First we dealt, dealt with pre, we're preserved from apostasy, but now we're dealing with the problem of apostasy. The problem of apostasy here in verse 3 and 4. And we're just going to start here in verse 3 tonight. And the Bible says here, let's read both of these verses together, and then we'll go back and talk about the first part of verse 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying even the only, denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So, first of all, just in the, just in the very first part here uh, of verse 3, what I want to see tonight is dealing with problem of apostasy is that apostasy abolishes the common salvation. Apostasy abolishes the common salvation. That means it's not for it. It's not for it. And so Jude places the emphasis here on the common salvation because that's what apostasy tries to destroy, the common salvation. And so here we start out with the word beloved. Beloved. And here Jude was dedicated because of his love for the brethren. He was dedicated to these brethren. Because he loved them. Beloved tells us that they were loved of God. This is, this is the a term that the Lord uses uh, throughout the Bible for his children. And, and he said, he was talking to them and he said, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. And so, and because the Lord loved them, Jude loved them. And why did the Lord love them? Because he's their, his children. They were his children. And Jude calls them beloved in two other verses here in this book of Jude. In verse 17, he says, But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 20, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And so those are two other times he refers to them as beloved. He loved them because the Lord loved them, loved him, and uh, loved them. Jude was concerned about their spiritual well-being. And by the way, we ought to be concerned about each other's spiritual well-being, uh, just as Jude was. This concern came out of his love for them. And his love for them came out of the Lord's multiplied love in his heart. Remember verse 2 said, uh, talked about the multiplied mercy and peace and love of God to them. He knew they were going to need it. And he had it. He was walking with the Lord. And he had that love and his love poured out to these believers here. And if we can look at people and not have a burden of heart, a burdened heart or concern for their souls and spiritual well-being, then we know that the Lord's love is not being multiplied in our hearts. There's some telltale signs of that, and that's one of them. If we can just pass people up and not be concerned or not think about them and not be concerned about where they're at with the Lord... And we ought, to, we ought to have the Lord's love multiplied to us in his presence because that's what he wants for us. So Jude was dedicated because of his love for the brethren. He says, beloved. Then he says, when I gave all diligence. When I gave all diligence. Jude was diligent, not only dedicated because of his love for the brethren, but Jude was diligent because of the apostates that they were diligent. So he needed to be diligent. Now, the word all here means everything, or that it was a priority for him. He said, beloved, 
When I gave all diligence, it was a priority for me. Diligence means to be earnest, or earnest would mean to be sincere about something. In his sincerity um, here, it means to be earnest and to be hasty, fast of speed to do something. And so what's being said is that Jude's actions of sincerity in this matter of the common salvation was fast. He didn't delay. The Lord spoke to him about what he was supposed to do, and he got right down to business about doing it because of his love for them. He was diligent. He put all of his sincerity and speed into getting them this message. He wasted no time because the apostates were giving all, their all, into spreading their false message. And by the way, they're still spreading their false message. Amen. And some of them are doing a pretty good job of it. And we've got to be diligent. What are we diligent at? If we want to get anything done, we have to be diligent at it or it's not going to get done. I hope you're diligent at your job. I hope you're diligent at home when you clean your house, when you wash your vehicles, all those things. But I hope you're diligent with, your, with the Lord in your personal walk with Him. You're diligent in what He's asked you to do in your life. Are we diligent about getting the message of the common salvation out to lost people and contending for the faith? If we are diligent... We will do what we can, where we can, while we can. That explains diligence. So let me give you an example. Let's say we're at the mall. All right? So there's usually a lot of people at the mall, except for right now probably. But usually, right, there's a lot of people there. So we're talking about being diligent about getting the common salvation to those people. And so we're not going to be able to give everybody in the mall a track and share with them from the Bible how to be saved, right? Now, we might be able to pass out literature to as many people as possible, but to be able to give them the plan of salvation, to talk to them about the person of salvation and what they need, it's impossible to talk to all of them that we're going to see uh, there. But, we, but if we attempt to give a track and the gospel message to everyone that we communicate with, then we have, will have shown diligence. And I'm saddened that I don't show as much diligence as I ought to show. Or at least at one time I did show. I wouldn't let some, at one time I wouldn't let anybody pass me without giving them something and trying to talk to them. And that's not always the case now. You know, we get sidetracked by things. But when I talk about communicating with someone, that means anybody we talk to out of necessity or uh, by accident or on purpose. Because we run into all those kind of people. If we're out in the mall, maybe. Um, a necessity would be you talk to the cashier if you buy something. Well, that's out of necessity. So we give them a track and we try to talk to them about the Lord. Might be accident if somebody's kid runs into us and falls on the floor. <laughs> right? And then we say, oh, it's okay. We want to give you an invitation to come to church. Do you know the Lord is your personal Savior? Or purpose would be we go out of our way and, and the Lord speaks to our heart and we say, hey, do you have a church home? Do you know Jesus as your Savior? You know, and then talk to them. This is talking about you we're communicating with them and trying to get the gospel to them. We might also say that we're trying to be a faithful witness. Being a faithful witness. We want to be a faithful witness. And that's part of this. That's part of what he's trying to do is to encourage them to get on the gospel bandwagon of sharing the gospel and giving the gospel to other people because he's burdening his own heart about it because there won't be a gospel if it's not given out nobody's going to know it if they don't receive it so jude was dedicated because of his love for the brethren but he was also diligent because of the apostates and their diligence that they exercised and he said we've got to be diligent i got to get you the message and then you've got to get the message out yourself and you got to know about these apostates and then he says this, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. So Jude was deliberate because of the, the apostate's error. He was deliberate, meaning he spoke specifically about this common salvation to them. Here are some reasons why this is a common salvation. First of all, every believer has this salvation in common with every other believer. 
That could be one reason why he says it's a common salvation. The Lord saves every man the same way. It's by grace through faith. We, we learn that, obviously, and you know that in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Every man is saved the same way. That's it. By grace through faith. The Lord sanctifies every man the same way. It's by grace through faith. We trust God. He gives us the strength to do what we cannot do and to draw closer to Him and to become more like Him. Titus tells us that in the book of Titus in chapter 2, verse 11. The Bible says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. So it not only brought salvation, but it's teaching us something, the Bible tells us. It's teaching us that denying ungodliness, this is sanctification it's talking about, and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. So, every believer has this salvation in common with every other believer. Also, salvation is equally opened or common to all men who would believe the gospel and receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. It's common because it's open to everyone. Everyone has, that hears it has access to it. So, the Bible says in 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4 and following, it says, Who, that's referring back to the Lord, will have all men to be saved. All men. Not some men. His desire when he died on the cross was for all men to get saved. And to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. In chapter 4 and verse 10 of the same book, 1 Timothy, the Bible says in, in verse 10, For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men. He is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. So potentially any man can get saved. It's open to any man but specifically those that believe on Him will be saved. That's what the Bible is teaching us here. So salvation is equally open to all. Salvation is the same for every believer. It's common, same thing for every believer. And salvation was a common occurrence. It was not abnormal for people to be saved every day and every week. It wasn't uncommon. It was a common thing. You know, at one time, thousands of people were getting saved in the early church. And they were being added to the church daily. Now that was the common thing. We're uncommon today. This is uncommon according to uh, the early church. We're not seeing people saved every day. Now there might be somebody saved every day in the world. I trust there are. There's probably thousands of people being saved across this globe every day by soul winners going out and telling other people about Jesus. I wish we could see someone saved every day just from our congregation, that we were telling people about the Lord. But that salvation was, a, I believe it was a common occurrence at that time. They were telling people about Christ, and it was common. And then there's another thing that, about this common salvation. The general knowledge of the way of salvation was common among the people and more common than any other false way of salvation. It was a common salvation. All the previous reasons, I believe, are true concerning the common salvation, but this reason... I believe is the one that Jude was specifically referring to in this passage. Meaning that it was more common for people to know about salvation through Jesus than any other false God or false way that existed. It was a common salvation. That's why we see in the end of verse 3, Jude tells them to earnestly contend for the faith. He said earnestly contend. This is a common salvation, but you've got to contend for it or it will not be the most common salvation among the people anymore. Because if we don't tell people and we don't contend for the faith, then it's not going to be common. There's going to be some other faith that's going to be common, but not the faith. 
not the faith that was passed down to us. Now, we talked about some reasons why it was a common salvation, but here are some reasons why this salvation is not common. It is not common. Salvation in and of itself is anything but common. Um, if you've experienced salvation, it's not the common thing. It's not the norm uh, thing that happens every day. The greatest miracle that has ever been performed on man is the miracle of salvation. Amen. So when people ask me, do I believe in miracles? I say, absolutely. I believe, I believe in all the miracles, right? I just don't believe I can perform them on people. I believe that God can do whatever he wants. But I'll tell them, the, I've experienced a miracle from God. My salvation. It is the greatest miracle I will ever experience. I don't care if he saved me from dying and brought me back to life. It is not greater than my salvation. And you'll never experience anything, a greater miracle than your salvation in your life. It, that is not common. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm glad salvation isn't common in that sense. But salvation is not common because it takes man, a man whose spirit is dead, and makes his spirit alive. That's not a common thing. That's very uncommon to take place and to happen. Look at John chapter 5. John chapter 5 and verse 24. Jesus said this, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that, that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from... What a peculiar phrase here at the end of this verse. From death unto life. From death unto life. Now that's not the common thing. The common thing is to go from what? Life unto death. That's what happens. Everything is dying in this world. If something is made alive, that's not common. And before we knew Jesus Christ as our Savior, we were dead spiritually. And He made us alive. Look at John, 1 John. 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 14. The Bible says here, We know, I'm glad we can be certain about something. Amen. We know that we have passed from, there it is again, death unto life. Because we love the brethren, he that loveth not his brother abideth in death. So not only have we passed from death unto life by trusting Jesus as our Savior, but we can know that because his love can abound in us. The love that obviously Jude had for them when he called them beloved. Here, look at Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1. The Bible says here, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Spiritually, they were dead. They had to be made alive, and that's what he's explaining to them. They didn't understand all that. They knew they trusted Jesus. They knew what he'd do for them. But he's trying to explain some specific things that happen about them being made spiritually alive. And Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. That's all about spiritual death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's spiritual life that he gives us. So this, this salvation, it's not that common. Not in that sense. Because it does the opposite of what's normal and what's common. And salvation is not common because salvation makes a man better in the eyes of the Lord and in the eyes of the world. That's not common. That's not common. I want you to go to James with me. James chapter 2. I want you to go to verse 23 with me. James chapter 2 and verse 23. And salvation makes us better in the eyes of the Lord. Now this is what I mean here in verse 23 of James chapter 2. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God. That means he had faith. He trusted him. And it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. He was called the friend of God. He was made better in the eyes of the Lord. Before we know Christ as our Savior, before we believe God for anything, all we are are sinners deserving to go to hell. We're enemies of God. But when he believed, just like when we believe, 
the, it was imputed unto us. That righteousness was imputed unto us. Now, the Lord sees him as being righteous. That's not common. That's not something that happens. This is uncommon. Salvation, what it does for us. But it not only does that in the eyes of God, but in this same chapter it talks about how we're justified before men. Look at verse 20, 21. It makes us better in the standing of men as well. In verse 21 it says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? Look at verse 24. Yeah, 24. Ye see how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only? Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when, when she was received? Uh, when she received the messengers and had sent them out another way? Different in the eyes of the world. Justified. By the way, the Lord doesn't need our works to see that we're justified. <laughs> he looks on our heart. Um, we see works. He sees the heart. That's why it says when he believed, it was imputed for righteousness. Not when he worked. This justification was other people seeing it. It was being carried out. His faith was being carried out. In verse 26, the Bible says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So faith that allows the Lord to see us justified produces works in our life that allows the world to see us justified. That's what should happen. That's what the Bible's teaching here. There is no work of grace in the heart where there are no acts of grace in the life. You either have grace or you don't. Either God's given you grace or he hasn't. There's no in between. The common thing in this world is to get worse, not get better. So salvation is very uncommon here about that. I want you to go to 2 Timothy. We'll conclude here. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, chapter 3, beginning in verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Man, are we seeing that today? Amen. Being carried out. Amen. And by the way, it's going to get worse. You can bank on it. The Bible said it was. And what are we supposed to do? Verse 14 says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. If you're learning them from the Scriptures, if God's teaching you, then you just continue on in the things that you've been assured of. And Jude says that we are to earnestly contend as we continue on, no matter what goes on, no matter what takes place, no matter how much the evil men and seducers are waxing worse and worse. We continue on. And we are to live, in verse 12, godly. And you know what's going to come? Persecution. But we're to live godly. We're to contend earnestly for the faith. So we must lovingly and diligently make the common salvation known to all that we come in contact with. May the Lord help us. Uh, the book of Jude is going to play out before our eyes here. Father, we, we do thank you for your word tonight. We thank you that you are able. You are able. You are able to stop anything that the Bible says is going to come. But you give us a free will. And things are going to happen. And I'm thankful that one day you're going to be in complete control. And you'll be calling the shots. Oh, we already know that you are in your sovereignty. And no one will ever overthrow you. But Father, we think about these things. And, and we ask that you give us what we need to be earnest. And to contend. To be diligent. That we would care about the common salvation. That it would become common. That it would be commonplace. So many people talk about salvation and they say they're saved. But they don't understand what salvation is. They might be trying to be justified by works, but they've never been justified by faith. Father, please help us. Help us to be diligent. Father, be thorough with us, even at this moment, as we commune with thee.
We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Maybe you're here tonight and you say, Brother Justin, I'm lost. I'm lost. Wouldn't you like to say yes to the Lord's love today? He loves you. He loved these believers here in Jude, and he, he loves you, but he wants to show his love to you. You realize that he died for you and was buried and raised from the dead to pay for all your sins? Wouldn't you accept him tonight and trust him as your personal Savior? What if I say, Brother Justin, I'm going to raise my hand, and, I, and I'm not sure I'm saved. I want you to pray for me. No, I'm not going to embarrass you. I will pray for you. Anybody say that? I'm not sure I'm saved tonight, but I'm sure concerned about it. Believers, are you lovingly and diligently making salvation known to others? This was not just for this time. This is for every generation of believers until Jesus comes back. Jude was written. And it looks like, it appears, if the Lord allows us to be that generation that's alive at his coming, the book of Jude was written just for us, it seems like. Right on the heels of the revelation of Jesus Christ. Would you respond to the Lord how he spoke to you tonight? Father, thank you for your working in us. Thank you for speaking to us. I don't know how you might have spoke to each individual, but I'm thankful that you do speak to us and you guide us by your Holy Spirit. May you help us to be more diligent with the common salvation, making it known. So it can do some uncommon things in people's lives. And even in our life, as we, as we seek to be obedient to your will for us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you that we're your beloved. Because we're in your beloved, your son. Father, guide us this week. May we learn to truly be an army as we leave these, this building, as we leave these doors, as we go out to our homes. May we fortify our homes in your word, in your presence, and be able to help others on the job, out and about. May you give us some encounters this week with people that you have set up for us, and may we be faithful. To speak your word. Thank you, Lord. And we ask this to seal these things in our hearts tonight. And if there's one that's not saved, Lord, please don't let them sleep tonight. Let them be so uneasy. Let them be under such conviction that they have to call out on you to get saved. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, until we meet again, I want you to encourage you to take time to know the Lord and to make Him known. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. God bless.